everyone, Neon Jigglypuff here, and welcome to another Top 5 video. Today's Top 5 video will actually be a ranking video. The ranking of the 5 DLC characters added in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass 1. The rules here are pretty simple. All I'm going to be doing is ranking my least favorite to favorite DLC character in Fighters Pass 1, starting with number 5 and ending with number 1. And for those who are wondering, I will also cover DLC Pack 2 and all the Mii costumes in the future. So with that all said, let's just move on to number 5, my least favorite, but still enjoyable, DLC character in Fighters Pass 1. Coming from Fire Emblem Three Houses... Byleth. Ah, good old Byleth from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Who would have thought that he of all characters would be number five on this list? So lately I've been seeing a lot of trends on Twitter and stuff basically stating that if you don't like Byleth, that means you're bad and you blindly hate Fire Emblem, but actually that's not true. I actually really enjoy the Fire Emblem series. It's just, uh, I didn't really enjoy Three Houses that much. But despite that, I really don't hate the inclusion of Byleth. In fact, I think that it was actually a smart choice and that it was bound to happen at some point. Although in my opinion, he should have been part of the base roster, but I completely understand why he wasn't. But uh, Byleth isn't all bad, because his moveset's actually pretty unique, being the fact that he doesn't even have just a sword, he has multiple weapons that he can choose from. And, you know, people have complaints that there are a lot of sword fighters and Smash Brothers, but that wasn't really a complaint to me. In fact, I never really cared for the amount of sword fighters and Smash Brothers, because, like, that's just a common weapon in uh, video games. And if I'm gonna say one good thing about him, that would be that his design's pretty cool, except for his stupid coat cape with sleeves that he doesn't use, and I always thought that was a stupid detail. I, I, it, it doesn't look cool, it, it just looks stupid. But other than that, that's really all I have to say about Byleth. That's my reasoning for why he's number five. I'm not really a big fan of his game. But with that all said, let's move on to number four, my fourth favorite character in Fighters Pass 1. The Phantom Thief hailing from Persona 5, Joker. Oh my god, Jokers and Smash Brothers! Is this for real? Wait, who's Joker again? Yes, here we are, number four, Joker from Persona 5. Now, the main reason why he's only number four on this list is because, to be honest, while I was excited for his inclusion, I didn't know who Joker was before he was announced for Smash. In fact, I didn't even know what Persona was. In fact, what's really funny is that I thought that Shimigami Tensei was Persona, and I thought that all the characters like you and Joker and that blue-haired guy were simply just spin-off characters from that series. And don't worry, just because he's number four doesn't mean I don't like him. In fact, I really, really like Joker. I thought that he was a very cool inclusion for Smash Brothers. I mean, his moveset is pretty crazy. I like his whole Persona gimmick. And his music? Amazing! The soundtrack we got from the Persona series was incredible. Sure, we only got about 11 songs, but those 11 songs are very, very nice. My favorite being Aria of the Soul. I love that remix. And the original one is honestly beautiful. And in terms of Joker's moveset, I really like how quick and fast-paced he is. I mean, he's pretty quick on his feet. And I like how he does little damage, but it racks up over time. So he's just there chipping away at your percentage meter as time goes on. And as a bonus, I love how his gun matches the tempo of Megalovania. Just as a bonus. That, that really took the cake for me. <laughs> And not only does Joker have the longest victory jingle in all of Smash Brothers, but he's also the only character in the entire series to have multiple victory jingles. So overall, Joker's a pretty cool character and he's pretty fun to play, and I'm glad he's part of the series. Now with that out of the way, we can move on to number three, my third favorite character in Fighters Pass 1. Prancing in from Dragon Quest XI S, HERO! A 
H-E-R-O, you're our hero. Yes, number three in this list is none other than the Dragon Quest Hero. So, Hero is a little different than the previous two characters that I've talked about so far. Mainly that he has a gimmick where he can actually use special attacks as if he were in an RPG battle. Whether it be Kamikaze, Flak, or Whack, Hero's got it all. Despite his moveset being pretty simple outside of his special attacks, he's a lot of fun to play. And by far the best thing about Hero are his alts, where he brought along three other heroes from three other Dragon Quest games, including the all-popular Erdrick. And he was likely planned to be the default skin, but they changed it to 11 because they wanted to get that sweet, sweet advertisement in for Dragon Quest 11s. Also, another thing about Erdrick that I want to point out is that he looks pretty similar to Goku, so I think this is the closest we're ever going to get to Goku being in Smash Brothers, which, you know what? I think that's pretty good. I think it's just as good, in fact. And on top of that, his inclusion in the Smash Brothers was the reason why I actually picked up my copy of Dragon Quest XI-S, which I actually really enjoyed. But the one downside to Hero in Smash Brothers is the fact that his music didn't get any remixes, and I don't know if this is true for all, but I don't really like Dragon Quest music. In fact, I think that a lot of it is pretty bad. And the fact that they're just a MIDI file doesn't make that any better. But that's really the only downside I have to Hero being in Smash. Everything else is pretty good. So with that all said, let's move on to number two, my second favorite DLC character in Fighters Pass 1. Busting in from Fatal Fury, Harry! Oh man, do I have a story for you! So, back then, Terry Bogard, for me, was really like the nail in the coffin, because it was at a time where I was very angry about all these third-party characters being added as advertisements. I know, in hindsight, it was a really stupid thing to be angry about, but just hear me out. Back then, I was a lost soul who still had hope for Bandana Waddle Dee and Waluigi and so on and so forth, and I thought that these third-party characters were, quote, stealing the limelight from the smaller Nintendo characters. Now, combine that with the fact that I had zero idea who Terry Bogard was or even what the Neo Geo was, I was not angry at Sakurai or the dev team, but I was more so just annoyed. Well, that is until I actually got down to playing the original Fatal Fury a few years ago, when everything changed. My god, I love that game. Playing through the original Fatal Fury on the Switch was enlightening, because it really taught me about how crazy and awesome these characters are, and how amazing this world is, and how great it is to actually have Terry alongside all these other gaming icons from many different companies. Mostly Nintendo, but you know the deal. And the soundtrack they brought with us? Over 50 songs from Fatal Fury series? It is awesome! Almost every single song in the playlist, if not every song in the playlist, is a hit! I love the soundtrack so much to the point where sometimes I bring my Switch outside with me when I go for walks or on the bus just to listen to the soundtrack because it's that good! And on top of that, Terry Bogard brought my favorite stage in Smash Ultimate with him, the King of Fighter stage. I don't know what it is, it's just... Perfect. It's the stage that I didn't know I wanted my entire life. It makes Smash Brothers feel more like a traditional fighting game, but it still feels like Smash at the same time, so it's not taking away from what Smash is. So in a way, it feels like it's adding more to what Smash is, if that makes any sense. And if you know me, then you know that I am a huge Amiibo fan. I mean, look at my Amiibo wall. Do you not see how crazy that is? And just look at Terry's Amiibo, like, it is awesome. Look at the detail. Look at it. Look at the detail. Now. So it's crazy to me that two years ago, Terry Bogard was my least favorite DLC character, and now he's my second favorite of all time. Anyway, let's not babble on for too long. Now let's move on to number one, my favorite DLC character in Fighters Pass 1. Oh, 
don't say- <laughs> Yeah, you weren't expecting that, were you? Here's the real number one. Smashing in from Spiral Mountain! Banjo and Kazooie! Wow, even almost three years later, I still can't believe I'm saying this. Banjo and Kazooie join the battle. Whether you love them or you hate them, you gotta admit, they feel right at home on Nintendo Switch. Now, I don't really talk about this too much, but way back in the Smash Bros. Wii U days, I was actually a huge Banjo supporter. Which is odd because to this day I've never played a Banjo and Kazooie game, so I have no idea what these characters are. And fun fact, when Smash Bros. on 3DS first came out, Duck Hunt Duo was actually my main because they reminded me of Banjo Kazooie. And I would also use this alt, so you can really see where I was going with that. So here's the golden question. Why do I like Banjo and Kazooie so much despite me never playing their games ever? Well, it all comes down to one simple thing. They're fun to play. They're awesome. They're great. And not to be disrespectful or anything, but their trailer's the only one out of the five that actually made me smile. Yeah, I know. But one of the biggest, if not the biggest reason why I love Banjo Kazooie so much is because it made my best friend KDP so happy. I mean, take a look at his reaction for just a second. Yo, wait, what is this? No way! Let's go! Oh, 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 oh. oh fuck up! Fuck up! Show it! Show it! Show me it now! Show me it now! <laughs> now, if that doesn't put a smile on your face, I don't know what will. Seriously, that is my favorite Banjo and Kazooie reaction to this date. And before I forget, I need to talk about the music you're hearing right now. The remix is amazing, and it was composed by none other than the legendary Grant Kirkhope. Honestly, Grant, if you're watching this, your work is amazing and you should never give up. I love this track. Overall, I would definitely say with confidence that Banjo and Kazooie are my favorite DLC characters in Fighters Pass 1. There's so much life and energy put towards them and the Smash team really did an amazing job finally realizing them together in Smash Brothers. I hope you all enjoyed my top 5 video of Fighters Pass 1 and I thank you all for sticking by to the end. I will see you when I rate Fighters Pass 2. Have an amazing day, guys. Banjo, Kazooie, you're finally home, and I couldn't be more happy about it.